um, he's gone all over the world with what he's doing and, and uh, he, he's sharing in Eastern Europe and uh, organizing marches and right there in the in the headquarters of the Holocaust um, you know in Poland and Lithuania and, and through Eastern Europe and he's doing some great work in Israel and, and it's just so wonderful to have you here Ted you're really blessing us tonight thank you for coming um, I'd like to open with Matthew 22 at verse 36, and this is um, a teaching that Yeshua gave that really comes straight out of the Torah, and it comes straight from the uh, tradition of the rabbis of Israel. They always taught this, and he was asked, um, I'm, I'm here at Matthew 22, verse 35, testing him one of them a lawyer asked him this question he was asked this question as a test often other times people just asked him in earnest you know they just wanted to know what he thought and the question was teacher which is the greatest commandment in the Torah that's a pretty important question you know um, what's the greatest commandment and and the rabbis in Judaism have always taught that the whole of the Torah hangs upon this commandment and he goes on and he says, he said to him, I think it says it right up there behind me, doesn't it? Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha. So he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love him with all your heart, soul, and strength. That's the greatest commandment. Uh, here in, in this particular incident, he, he just gives the short version. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And, and uh, elsewhere, he gives the whole answer. And it's really, it's all one commandment. Adonai Echad, there's one Lord. Love him with all your heart, soul, and strength. That's considered one commandment. And it's the most important commandment. Because if there's one God, then we should love him with all of our heart. And, and this is the, the greatest teaching of the Torah. It's the most important teaching. And this is the gift of Israel to the world. That Israel has always held to this as the most important teaching. And, and the responsibility of the Jewish people was to bear witness that God is one. And so Yeshua brings it home when he teaches this and reiterates it that it's the most important commandment now you notice this because i wanted to open with this because tonight what i really wanted to talk about is what's called in the torah from exodus 19 it's called litziat mitzrayim the going forth from egypt um, more generically you hear it called the exodus okay and it's at this instance in exodus 19 where god brings israel to mount sinai and it's really at mount sinai that the nation of israel is created and this is so important for mankind because it's god knows exactly what he's doing here and and he's got a nation there and they it's not they're not there because they're the smartest or the most righteous or the best looking people or anything like that just god has just chosen this nation because they're the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, period. And why did he choose them? I don't know. <laughs> he just did. It's one of those things. And so, but what is he doing? He's creating a nation, separating a nation from all other nations to make that nation his nation, his own nation, for the purpose of bringing forth the Savior of all nations. So from one nation comes forth the savior of all nations including that nation from which he came forth and that's just the way that god did it he's not a respecter of persons he's not saying that israel is better than other nations they proved that they weren't but he's using one nation to bring forth the salvation of all and what happens here at chorev as it's also called or mount sinai is the gift of the Ten Commandments. Now, before I 
talk about that. He, he speaks to Israel, and he, he tells them what he's going to do in, in 19.5, Exodus 19.5. Or let me start at verse 4, excuse me, 19.4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Okay, so you saw all that. You saw the ten plagues. You saw how I went through the land and, and distinguished from between you and Egypt and, and the slaying of the firstborn and how I brought you forth across the Red Sea and swallowed up the mightiest army in the world in the sea. You saw all that. And here's what I was doing. You've seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now then... If you listen closely to my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my own treasure from among all people, for all the earth is mine. So as for you, you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. So God is telling Israel that You'll be my covenant nation. You'll be my own treasure. You'll be separate from all the other nations for the aforesaid purpose, to be the nation to bring forth the Savior, the Messiah. And so it is um, that God brought Israel to this mountain. And, and before I read on, it's here that the Ten Commandments are given. And the Ten Commandments in the Torah are really awesome commandments, really important commandments. Uh, you know, thou shall not commit adultery, um, keep the Sabbath. I don't know why that one is often left out by people who honor the Ten Commandments. I mean, um, but that is one of them. Um, um, you shall have no gods before me. But you notice that as great as the, ten, as the Ten Commandments are, and as they seem to be set apart here in some way from all the other, there's as, as many as 613, the greatest commandment, which was the one commandment that was always thought of and always taught as the most important commandment, the one which Yeshua himself drove the point home and said that it was the greatest commandment. God is one. There's one Lord. Love him with all your heart, soul, and strength is not one of the Ten Commandments. So if the Ten Commandments are so special in terms of being distinct from all other commandments, why isn't the most important one mentioned there? Not only that, but the second most important that the rabbis of old always taught and Yeshua taught also is like the first Love your neighbor as yourself, the idea being we're all created in the image of God. So if we love God, we should love one another as well, not one of the ten. And, and so I can't explain to you why God in his infinite wisdom decided to leave those two out. But I can tell you, I think that it, um, well, I can tell you the fact that they're not part of the ten tells us something about the ten commandments that we would otherwise miss if those two were included. And here's what it is. What happened at Mount Sinai, let's look at it. Uh, God tells them that he's about to come to them. You see in verse, in verse 9, I'm about to come to you in a thick cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you. And believe you forever. So God is about to reveal himself to the nation of Israel. Nothing like this has ever been done. Nothing like this since before this time or after this time has ever been done. An entire nation witnessing the glory of God. Various individuals, yes. But an entire nation brought together to bear witness to the Shekinah, to the glory of God, no, nothing like that has ever happened. And then the way it happened, you go down to uh, verse 16. There was thundering and lightning and a thick cloud on the mountain and the blast of an exceedingly loud shofar. All the people in the camp trembled. So there's thunder, there's lightning. On the mountain, there's this sound. <laughs> 
louder and louder. And the people are terrified at this sight and this sound. All the people trembled. Moses, that was, that's one of the songs Ted did tonight. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the Lord coming back. But it is going to be a terrible sight. You know, when the heavens open up and there's a sign of the Son of Man coming on, riding on upon a, upon a white horse with all the chariots of the angels surrounding him and coming with the blast of the archangels shofar and all the world will see. You won't even have to flip on CNN. You won't have to flip on uh, MSNBC to watch. You, you'll be able to go right outside, look up in the sky, anywhere on planet Earth and see the coming of the Son of Man, as he referred to it, coming riding on a white horse, the Son of God. To take David's throne in Jerusalem, all the world will see it. Like it or not, believe it or not. Oh, you didn't believe? Well, you believe now? <laughs> Still some folks will, I don't know, maybe they'll say he's the Antichrist. That's what I think, but we'll see. Uh, some folks just won't, you know, they're so dug in. <laughs> they just won't give an inch. But uh, anyway... Um, This, uh, this uh, incident was unlike anything else in history that has ever happened. And, and all the people trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They stood at the lower part of the mountain. The entire Mount Sinai was on smoke because Adonai had descended upon it in fire. And so it was in this context uh, wherein this tremendous revelation came down from heaven in the sight of the whole nation of Israel that the Ten Commandments are given. And so you see that it's not the commandments themselves, but, and I should add also, that when God gave these commandments, he spoke in the hearing of the whole nation. Each and every one of the Ten Commandments, Israel heard them. With their own ears, they heard the voice of the living God coming out of a dark cloud. They saw his glory with their eyes. They heard his voice with their ears. God made Israel witnesses. Witnesses. Witnesses of what? Witnesses that he's God. Not only had they seen the miracles and the supernatural Acts, the outstretched arm and the strong hand of the Lord in Egypt and in bringing them forth across the Red Sea. Not only had they seen that, but they saw the glory. They heard the voice of God. And after they heard 10 commandments spoken, they didn't want any more. They said, Moses, you go up. You go talk to the Lord because we don't we don't want to hear anything else. And that was it. From that time forward, after those 10, from that time forward, the Lord would give the commandments to Moses and he'd write them down, you know, on a scroll and he'd come down the mountain and then he'd say, here, this is what God said. And so it was what God said. He wrote it down, but they didn't hear it the way that they did with those 10. And so uh, what's what is distinct about the Aseret Devarim, the Ten Commandments, is that these Ten Commandments made Israel what Israel is, which is witnesses, witnesses in the earth. They witnessed the voice of God and they witnessed the glory of God in a way that no other nation ever has. And this is the um, the true calling. This is the true purpose of Israel now when we get when we get to the latter days which is where we are right now this purpose is still relevant and still applicable it's just that in the new covenant the Jews were the nation that witnessed the son of God walking the earth healing the sick raising the dead the Jews were the ones who heard him say 
Lazarus come forth and they saw a man raised from the dead after he was four days gone he and he comes out all wrapped in like a mummy I don't know how he even walked out of that thing but it was the Jews that witnessed these things and saw these things and then wrote them down and carried the testimony to the rest of the world and and you see just like from the exodus forward from the going forth from Egypt or, and from Sinai forward the people of Israel over hundreds and hundreds of years by the time you get to Yeshua's time they they lost the vision slowly but surely and there were times up times and down times up and down good kings bad kings by the time you get to Yeshua the revelation of God the revelation knowledge of the one God that can't that came to the people that witnessed it was diminished it was greatly diminished uh, and the only way to bring it back was for the Messiah to come and you see that the mission of Messiah is to bring the revelatory knowledge of God to bring people back into the uh, the revelation of knowing God knowing the one God and it was Peter that saw this first when Yeshua said who do men say that I am and some of the disciples said Jeremiah another one said Elijah and it was Shimon Kepha Peter who said thou art a Mashiach thou art the Messiah Ben Elohim Chaim son of the living God he saw it he saw that the Son of God was walking the earth and so he embodied as a man the Son of God nonetheless he embodied the revelation of God upon earth as a man Israel saw the glory of God on a mountain the Jews in Yeshua's time witnessed him as a man and so they witnessed the great works that he did and now after hundreds and hundreds of years after the Jews brought that knowledge they brought that testimony to the Gentile world and there were signs and wonders and miracles in the outpouring of the Spirit and thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands maybe even millions of people got saved and reborn in the Spirit and walked away from paganism in the Roman temples and so forth and gave their lives to the God of Israel the glory of God fell all over Europe and all over uh, what they used to call Asia Minor Turkey and in and, and Greece and what today is Syria but after hundreds and hundreds of years just like what happened to Israel of old the, there's been ups and downs good times and bad times but I want to tell you that we're not today we're not in an apostolic era we're not seeing today what went on in the day of the Apostles I know I know there are things happening in the earth and I don't know everything that's going on out there but but we're waiting for the time to return immediately before the Lord comes back after those days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy the old men will dream dreams, the young men will see visions. The only thing that will distinguish us, you know, the, the uh, baby boom generation and I'm the generation X and you all that are the millennial is that we're just a little more experienced than you. But when God pours out his spirit on all flesh, y'all will be prophesying things and seeing things in the spirit that are astounding to your parents and your teachers and then they'll be seeing things and and it, the whole earth will be filled with the glory of God like the waters cover the sea but you see that the revelation has to come back to Israel this is the final link in the chain and this is happening it's just the beginning of it the messianic Jews are being raised up in the earth for that purpose Messianic Judaism is Jew and Gentile together in Messiah one in Messiah but you you don't have it without the Jews we've had a Gentile body for a long time 
now God is bringing the Jew and the Gentile together by saving the Jews so that together we can usher in and welcome Messiah Yeshua when he comes back. I get so blessed by serving the Lord with my Gentile brothers, with friends like you, Ted, and just, you know, we're from such different backgrounds, and, and God uh, has um, blessed me to do things for him with you. And it, it's just, you know, it, it's awesome. Yeah. And uh, it's just um, one example, and, you know, that's a big one in, in my life, and, and just... Um, you know, this is just the beginning of it. And that, that's what Messianic Judaism is, is that God is preparing the end time body to be witnesses in the earth. Again, to be witnesses to, to, to know and to have the revelation of God. I'm not talking about head knowledge, you see. This, it's, not, it's not about doctrine. The doctrine is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against doc doctrine is good. But that's not what Israel got at Mount Sinai. They got revelation, Shekinah, fire, thunder, the sound of the shofar, and the voice of God. I can't imitate that. <laughs> Moses. <laughs> the voice of God. They heard the voice of God. They saw. And so, and I can tell you this, in Judaism, we grew up celebrating Litziat Mitzrayim, the going forth from Egypt. All of our liturgy celebrated the going forth from Egypt. And even in the Torah from that time forward, the Lord Adonai begins to identify himself. I am the Lord your God who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord. So he starts to identify himself as the one who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. I'm the one who did that. I'm, I'm the one God. I'm the only God. All these gods of Egypt, nothing. I'm the one who brought you forth. Remember, because I showed you, when we, when we as a people think about what happened as recorded in the book of Exodus, we can see plainly he's the only God. This is why that uh, in Judaism... Uh, there's not a whole lot of talk about the devil, and it's uh, it's not that there, it's not that there isn't a devil. Okay, there is. There's a fallen angel, and he's you know uh, you, you heard me talk about it. He's fallen, and he's taken man into captivity. And Yeshua came and died on the tree to pay our our uh, the price of our sins to set us free from that yoke, so that we could come into what Yeshua has brought to us, so that. Um, we could come and be one with God, even as he's one. He said, in that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. We can't experience that without being set free from our sins, okay? But the thing is that the more that you focus on the devil, the more power you're giving him over you. He has no power. He, he never did have any power. His power is deception. So, so if, if, if you focus on him and if you focus on the enemy all the time, you're obsessing over the enemy, you're giving him power over you that he never had to begin with, and he certainly never will have it because Yeshua defeated him at the cross. He's done. He's a defeated foe. He's completely finished. So the thing is that we need to know the Lord as the one and only the Almighty, he's, there is no opposition to him, period. He's not the mightiest or the greatest. He's it, the one and only. Praise God. <laughs> and, when, and when we come to know him like that, then, then we start to see problems the way that is, Israelis don't talk about problems. They say this is problematic. But they, have you heard that? Am I true? Uh, I hear a lot of Israelis say it. This is problematic, but they won't say this is a problem. You know, we're surrounded on all sides by nations that have out, us outnumbered 100 to 1, and they have, you know, more weapons than us, and we, they want to drive us into the sea, and no one will help us. This is problematic. <laughs> Not a problem. There's a difference, because, you know, problematic comes and goes, but 
when, when you know the Lord the way that Yeshua has uh, brought us into it, then you know that he's the one and only. And by grace, by his grace, there's victory in every matter. There's overcoming in every matter because there, there is none other. I love this expression from Torah, Ein od milvado. There is none besides him. He's the one and only. There's none else. One God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His son, Yeshua, is the Savior. Come forth from that people. So this is uh, what Messianic Judaism is about. And I like to, uh, to ask Ted to come back up at this time. And... Um, yeah, man, you're a tough act to follow, too. I was kind of nervous coming up here talking to me. 